Okay, hey guys, we have one last little video lecture we're gonna do. And I have two simple concepts, relatively simple concepts that we're gonna talk about for the next few minutes. One of those concepts is latent heat and the other concept has to do with the types of chemical reactions uh, and energy that is associated with different types of chemical reactions. So um, let's go ahead and jump in. And we're gonna start by talking about this concept of latent heat. Now, I wanna give you, um, kind of a, a, uh, an example of something that will show you kind of the idea of latent heat. And that is um, a cup of ice water. Now, if you take a cup of ice water and measure the temperature of it, you would find that if it has both ice and water in it, you would find it has a temperature of 32 degrees. Now, interestingly enough, it will stay at 32 degrees uh, until the last little bit of ice is melted. And then uh, at that point, uh, the temperature would, if you add energy to that cup of water, the temperature would begin to rise. You can add energy in the form of heat to that cup of ice water before the ice is melted, but what you will find is there is no temperature increase. So even though there is heat being added, there is no uh, resultant change in temperature from the heat that is added. So if you know you're adding, suppose you're adding heat, you know you're adding heat and you see no change in temperature, what's happening? What's happening is that the energy in, that is being uh, added to the cup in the form of, of, of ice water in the form of heat is being used not to increase temperature, but rather to rearrange molecules. And that process of rearranging molecules is a concept that uh, when you're talking about a phase change, right? So either uh, solid liquid, liquid to vapor, or the other way around, vapor conden condensing into liquid, or uh, liquid uh, fusing into ice. All of those, the concept of those molecules, the energy being used to rearrange molecules at phase changes is what we call latent heat. So I'm gonna pull up a document to share with you and we'll look at a couple things real quick. Okay, I'm gonna get there yet. So here we go, um, latent heat. I'm gonna give you the actual definition of it. Latent heat is the amount of energy in the form of heat that is absorbed or released by a substance during a phase change. So in phase changes, energy is required. The energy that's required to, to complete the phase change uh, is spent rearranging molecules rather than changing temperature, which is what heat typically does when it is um, applied to a substance. Okay, so, um, and he latent heat is usually quantified by the letter L. I'm actually gonna pull up my little thing. So we quantify latent heat with the letter L. Now, each substance has its own specific latent heat, okay, for uh, these phase changes. And we can have a latent heat of fusion, which we would designate with an L sub F, or we can have a latent heat of vaporization, which we're gonna quantify by L sub V. Now, understand that that latent heat is tied to a specific substance. So each substance has its own latent heat. Um, also, it, I want you guys to make sure that you understand that whether you are, um, the latent heat of, of fusion applies to both the phase change from solid to liquid, and the phase change from liquid to solid. It doesn't matter which way you're going, the latent heat L sub F for a substance is going to be the same, okay, down here. And then the same thing is true when you're, when you're dealing with the latent heat of vaporization. If you're going from liquid to gas, if you're going from gas to liquid, the latent heat for a particular substance would be the same. Um, and so we have this latent heat. Uh, it is the amount of energy absorbed or released by a substance during a phase change. Uh, and to quantify, but, but that's not enough. That gives us one piece of the equation, but that does not give us the full picture of the total energy that is required for that phase change because we have to add in um, the mass of the substance that's undergoing a phase change. Obviously, if you are talking about melting a cup full of ice, you would have one energy um, change associated with that. If you're talking about melting a gallon of ice, that would have a different um, energy that's associated with it. Now, the latent heat of fusion for both of those would be the same, but you would have a different mass. And the equation for, solve, for determining that 
is that the energy is equal to the mass of the substance times the latent heat. Okay, whether you're talking about latent heat diffusion, latent heat of vaporization, and we would call this Q sub F or Q sub fusion, and down here we would have Q sub vaporization. And this one would be equal again to the mass of that substance, whatever it is, times the latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so that's how you determine the overall energy that is um, involved in a phase change. Uh, one other thing I want to make sure uh, to, that you know is that if you are moving from solid to liquid or from liquid to gas, you would have an, an energy change that is positive. If you're moving this way, you have a positive energy change. Okay? If you're going from gas to, to liquid or liquid to solid, you're going to have an overall energy change that is negative. All right. Oops, I shouldn't make that go the other way. Yeah, it's this way, like I'm showing with the arrow, that's going to have a negative energy associated with it. Okay, so that is latent heat. All right, I'm gonna erase this stuff so we can move down to the next part of the chapter or next part of the lecture. And we will talk about um, the energy that's associated with chemical reactions. All right. All right, let's scroll down here. So there's our equation again, Q equals M times L. Q is the energy that's either released or absorbed. M is the mass of the object and that's undergoing the phase change and L is our latent heat. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about types uh, of energy or energy that's associated with different types of chemical reactions. We have two uh, ways of quantifying energy in relation to chemical reactions. We have some reactions that are endothermic. That means it absorbs energy. And we have other reactions that are exothermic. And that means the chemical reaction releases energy. Um, so those are the two ways that we are going to categorize types of chemical reactions. Um, and I do want you to use the word absorb and release. They are much more precise than saying gain or lose. Um, and they paint a better picture of what's happening. Now, the thing that's really important to understand is that, so you kind of might be wondering, okay, so where is all this energy coming from, right, in terms of chemical reactions? Well, it turns out that we have some uh, energy that is kinetic and we have other energy that is potential. And for a chemical reaction, that potential energy is the energy that has to do with the position, the composition, the arrangement of the molecules themselves, okay? So where do we have energy in relation to position, composition, or arrangement? Well, that energy exists within the bonds of the molecules themselves. So if you can think about it, you can kind of think about magnets that are stuck together, okay? And the idea of pulling a magnet apart requires that, it, that you uh, impact it with the, right? Energy is absorbed as you pull those apart. You can actually feel the energy it takes to pull those things apart. The same is true in, a, in the breaking of a bond. So when you break chemical bonds, it actually absorbs energy. And conversely, when you form chemical bonds, it actually releases energy, okay? Um, okay, so breaking a bond requires a specific amount of energy being to be absorbed, and um, forming, a, forming a bond requires a specific amount of energy to be released. Okay, so our absorbed energy would be potential energy, and our released energy would be our kinetic energy. Okay, so determining then whether you've got an endothermic or an exothermic, endothermic or exothermic reaction then is, requires looking at the energy that is absorbed during the breaking of bonds of the reactants and comparing that to the energy that is released as you form the bonds of the products. And you can see here with my lovely little drawing, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I have 12 arrows. So in this particular reaction, it, uh, um, that is quantifying some amount, right? There is more energy being absorbed through the breaking of the bonds than energy is released by the forming of the new bonds. Um, so we would call that an endothermic reaction. The surplus of energy, okay, is on the reactant side, okay? We can also look at the kind of converse reaction where you have more energy that is released, um, as the bonds are formed, I'm sorry, as the, yeah, the bonds of the products are formed, then was absorbed in the breaking of the reactant bonds, okay? 
Um, I, it's really important that you understand energy exists on both sides of the equations, but one side of the equation will have a surplus of energy. Either more energy is released than was absorbed or more energy is absorbed than one was released. In this, in this reaction where the energy is absorbed, where does that extra heat come from? Of course, it comes from the surroundings. So this type of a reaction actually absorbs energy from the surroundings, right? That's where the, uh, the, that's where the um, abundance of energy is. And then there is less heat released in the forming of products. So in this chemical reaction, in an endothermic chemical reaction, it actually would feel cool to the touch because we have taken more energy from the surroundings than we released when we, when we formed the products. Uh, in contrast to that, in an exothermic reaction, we took less, it took less heat from the surroundings than what was released when we formed those products. So this um, would, be, would be warm to the touch when you see this kind of a chemical reaction. Combustion is always an exothermic reaction. Heat is released uh, in the burning of products, I'm sorry, of reactants. So, um, so those are the two types of chemical reactions, endothermic and exothermic. Let me see if there's anything else I want to talk about real quick here. Um, yes, so, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the basics of it. That's how we quantify those types of chemical reactions. And that is the nuts and bolts of the last half of the chapter. If you have questions, obviously, reach out to me, let me know. Otherwise, I will look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks.